false alarms. False alarms are a common but very serious problem in um, security systems, both in professional and um, home automation and security systems. It can be just a little inconvenience, or it can be a really big problem where you lose or customers lose trust in your system. It's like the boy who cried wolf. I guess everybody here knows the story, but uh, for those of you uh, who don't, I will give you a quick rundown on what is happening. So there's a little boy outside of a village, and he's taking care about some sheep. And as a little boy, he gets bored. So uh, what he does, he pranks the local villagers and uh, by crying, help, there's a wolf. A wolf is attacking. Help me. So what happens is um, the villagers, of course, come to rush and help him and try to find out what the situation is, um, but only to find him laughing and see that he made fun of them. He does this a few times, and every time, less and less people show up to help him. And eventually, nobody shows up because everybody knows it's a false alarm and nobody's responding. So one day, actually, a wolf comes and tries to attack him. So what was going to happen? He's crying for help, but nobody came. So as you can probably all imagine what happened, um, that was the end of the false alarms. To make sure that your security system is not bound to the same fate as our little shepherd here in this example, um, I'm here to show you ideas how to improve the false alarm um, performance of your system by adding microwave sensors. My name is Christian Düring. I'm a product manager at Innocent. And what I do is I show our customers how they can overcome the struggles with the systems and the current technology they have by integrating microwave sensors. What you will learn in the next 10 minutes is what a microwave sensor is, how it can be used to lower the false alarm rates in passive infrared uh, detectors, and how it can be used in security camera systems. So who of you in the audience has currently struggles with false alarms in their systems? OK, that's not too much, but let's show you what can happen. So let me show you what we believe. Um, we believe that dual technology is the key to have a great performance in your system. So I think the solution that you have to integrate or you should integrate or even consider is radars. And when I talk about radars, I'm not talking about this. Bulky, probably expensive, uh, big things. Uh, when we talk about radars, we talk about units like this. So what you see here on this page is a complete radar transceiver. It includes all the microwave um, at high frequency stuff. The antennas are integrated. Um, the signal conversion is integrated. So all you need to do is just take a look at the output signals. If the output signals are quiet, the surroundings are quiet. If you see anything move in the output signal, no matter how the signal would, uh, might look like, you know that something is going on. And it's so easy to use and integrate. 90% of all automatic sliding doors use this kind of technique uh, to determine if a person is approaching the door and opening it. So that's how easy it is. So you might be wondering, how could this help me get rid of false alarms? I was in a situation uh, back in 2014 uh, when a friend of mine was working at a security company. They built products for home automation and, and security. So they had a complete range um, of different products. They had PIR sensors. They had glass break sensors. They had um, all these uh, window shutter indicators. And they had a very good system. They, they were on par with the leading brands, but they had problems with their false alarm rate and the PIR sensors. And this got into very serious problems. So not even did they constantly uh, receive complaints from their customers. It even went so far that security guards did not even respond anymore to security calls from their system. So as a good sales guy, of course, I convinced him, let's try some microwave sensors. Let's try to integrate that and use features of both systems and improve on that situation. So what we did was some initial testing, and um, everything went well. The performance was quite good. And our, both our companies um, got together and yeah, managed to, to get a solution. We helped them integrate getting our system into, uh, into their PIR. Not only did this boost the performance, they got rid of the false alarms entirely, but they were also able to add more features like pet immunity 
or um, features light. You could uh, distinguish between a person and a car. So if this is, uh, the sensor was mounted next to a road, you could just ignore the cars and just trigger on, on persons. And this was four years ago. And what was once the, uh, the weak link in their system is now a product that is the most reliable product and the strongest part in their system, in their portfolio. So uh, this got us thinking. What other technologies could benefit from radar? And of course, we, we first monitored the security market. And the first thing we associated with security was obviously cameras. So we tried to find out what the issues are or what the yeah, what things can you not overcome just by using that one technology? And what we found was you could either, either have um, insects on your lands, you can have bad visibility due to fog, dust, or bad weather conditions like uh, rain, snow, bad lighting, shadow effects, or even just plain vandalism. If somebody decides to spray paint your lens, the show for tonight is over. You don't see anything. But if you have a combined sensor that uses dual technology, you can mount a radar either on the camera or it can be, be hidden, concealed behind almost every non-conducting material. So this means if an intruder comes and, and tries to, to fiddle with your cameras, they won't even be able to see that the radar is actually there. And you can still see, even if you don't have a visual anymore, you can still see if there are people in an area and if they are in an area that they're not supposed to be in. So after we found out the challenges, we built our first radar system. It was a scalable system, so could, you could use anything between uh, 1 and 128 uh, radar systems in one location. And the scenario we used it in was uh, quite sophisticated, so what we did is we secured the area in front of a fence. Um, it was fencing off um, mission-critical assets that you don't want anything to come near. And the challenge was to have a very narrow field of view. You see uh, the top view of the area. The red line is the path of, a, uh, of the person that is walking. And we had to detect, reliably detect, in any weather conditions, extreme temperatures, if somebody was there, how many were there, and what path they were taking. Performance of this system was very well, and this got a lot of people in the industry really interested. So soon we have been talking to the major camera manufacturers. We listened to their issues, what they have, because this was a, a very, yeah, a, a, a system that was tailored to a very special need, and it was custom exclusive. But still, it made a lot of, it made a lot of PR for us. So we found out what other struggles they have, what the, the most common installations are, what kind of fields of view they would need. And we came up with a, with a security, outdoor security range of products, a complete product family, to give you a higher field of view, several different distances. And I would like to show you one of these systems out of that range. So this is our 5020 security system. You can see it's still quite a small sized unit. You can see some of the features here. I won't go through these features. There's a lot more to that. We got our experts at our booth, and they're happy to tell you everything that's relevant for you. I would rather uh, show you a real-life scenario of the performance of this device. So what we have here is our user interface. You can load any background image. It has, you don't need it uh, to have something pulled up from, from maps or something like that. You can just use an image, a drawing, whatever you have. Then we have um, a camera picture for reference. So we're not doing anything. It's not part of our, our user interface. It's just for this demonstration to show you what was going on. You can set um, the position of the radar. You can set the, the orientation angle. There's a small wizard that helps you to match the, um, the picture to the actual size. So you, want, you would like to make sure that if something appears here on the screen, it's really there where you would expect it if you see it in the picture. So what we can do here is we have uh, these two yellow zones here. These are exclusion zones. 
So what's happening here is we have, uh, we have two buildings here, and the rooftop is accessible. So it's possible that people are walking around there, and we don't want to trigger any signal or even have to bother with the, uh, with the data that comes from the radar. So we exclude these zones. Nothing will come from them. You can also use that if you have a, a road, for example, and you just want to make sure that nobody is, uh, is triggering it. So the next feature you can do is um, there is this, uh, this red rectangular shape here. That's a predefined area, so you can just define how, large, how many you would like to have, how large they should be, where they should be. And what happens if you start the radar is it will give you out the position. So you get the x and y coordinates of every relevant object that is moving in that area. And you can constantly use that information to build your, your own yeah, application around that or have certain features um, you would like to trigger to. And you can also just use the output. If something goes in that area, you will get an alarm. That's a trigger signal from the cameras. You don't even have to bother with all the signals. You can just respond to that alarm message. So what you will be seeing here is uh, two, people, uh, two people will be walking here, um, get into the alarm zone, get out of the alarm zone. And I would like uh, you to focus on is, especially in the, in the end of the video, when they are returning back to the starting position, um, you will see that they are both tracked individually. So that's a really big challenge for radars. If, somebody, if people or objects come too close, usually you cannot distinguish between them. And uh, what you will see here is a very good performance of that. So as you can see, as the people are walking, see just one guy. He's now here in the picture, the other one. You see a small trail behind that, and you see the pinpoint position of these. So every time somebody comes here, in this case, the radar would now issue a security alarm. And even if you can't see them in the image, uh, because they might be obscured by trees, bushes, or something like that, you have a very good chance of detecting them with the radar. And this is what I was talking about. So they're coming really close overlapping, and it's still two objects. So that's how, how the performance is, what you can expect, and the data that, that you will receive and that you can integrate into your system. I told you that I don't want to bother you with technical details, um, but there's just one last point I would like to point out. I'm not sure who knows the parking space one that's uh, right outside Hall 8 and the hotel. So uh, for those guys of you who have not seen it, just after this presentation, go out there, get on a parking spot, get some fresh air, and look at the size of that. What we can cover with one of these units is two and a half times the size of that parking lot. Yeah, and after you come back from that, you will find us in Hall 7, Booth 7, B27. Our experts are there for you to answer your questions. And yeah, just come by, grab a cup of coffee, and let's find out how we can help you to increase your performance in your system. Thank you. <laughs>